vilifying the unvaccinated. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to have a look at an article or an opinion piece from news.com by journalist and radio host Joe Hildebrand, in which essentially he vilifies the unvaccinated. Now, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, guys. I believe vaccination is a beneficial thing for mankind. I'm vaccinated myself. But I don't like the well, I don't like the rhetoric I'm hearing from our journalists and what's being discussed in the media more and more. It's concerning me, probably because of my cultural heritage. Now, we've got to understand here when we're looking at any opinion piece written by a journalist, they need attention, they need clicks. They need eyeballs and views. So being a little bit edgy or you know, confrontational, maybe that could be the reasoning behind it. Or maybe this is just expressing a deep-seated anger or sense of disgust at a part of the community. Now, if you've watched any of Jordan Peterson's lectures, and I recommend that you do, he's got some fantastic ones. What's concerning is when people dehumanize others and, well, start to consider them with an element of disgust or revulsion. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'm overreacting and we're only starting to see the beginning of certain, well, certain rhetoric here. So let's have a look at this piece that Joe's written. People who refuse to get vaccinated are no longer decent members of society. Okay, no, you could, so you could be working your whole life, paying your taxes, running a business, employing people, donating to charity, taking part in Clean Up Australia Day. I tell you, that's very disappointing because Australia is so bloody clean. It's not like the TV ads. But because you have some hesitancy, maybe you're concerned, maybe you want to wait. You're no longer a decent member of society. I think there's a lot of rubbish that's put out there that's scaring a lot of people. There's a lot of I see it all the time, people just repeating the same rubbish again and again, and anti-vaxxers are, are having a field day with the fear of a lot of people. And honestly, I think the burden, it's not that these people are not decent members of society, the burden is on our, well, on society as a whole to convince people. Because you're asking them, even if it's asking them to take a risk, even if it is a small one, you're asking them to take a risk for the greater benefit of our nation. You need to convince them. Do you want Australia to be a nation when we force people to do it? That's what concerns me, is that that is the path where this, this rhetoric is going. So, and I'm going to bring up a, I'm going to bring up a uh, reference document here just to show everyone the 10 stages of genocide. I think we're at stage one, everyone. Other people will think we're much further along the path, but I think we're starting to see a, well, us versus them dialogue. Or, <laughs> I mean, look at this article. They're no longer decent members of society. Come on. Seriously, where have we heard this before? Do people not know history? Do they not know history? Okay, leftists that like authoritarian rule saying certain groups of people aren't decent members of society. You know where that leads. Okay. Do you think Germany just suddenly went crazy? No, it was a slow build-up of steps. It wasn't the soldiers first marching out there. It was neighbors dobbing each other in, throwing stuff to, to kick people out, reporting each other. So let's have a look at this opinion piece. On Wednesday this week, Victorian Premier Dan Andrews posted a single word, zero. Well, I understand that's how many times he's fallen down the steps that day. Was that, that what it was? Hemingway himself couldn't have conjured a declaration of more dr dramatic brevity. Sadly, the scenario is just was just as brief. Andrews was, of course, referring to the number of new daily COVID cases in Victoria. At that moment, it looked like Victoria's hard and fast lockdown strategy had worked, in stark contrast to the more relaxed and gradual approach taken by New South Wales. What about... Here's, here's an idea. Maybe these lockdowns aren't as effective as people are hoping. Maybe, maybe that, you know, could be, could be there. There is some research out there critical of them. And we looked at, right when this all started, we looked at open letters penned from epidemiologists that have actually worked 
with eradicating diseases, arguing against this strategy. Their, kit, their argument was vaccination as the way to deal with this, not lockdowns, because, well, there's another price that doesn't seem to be accounted for. The mental health issue, everyone, the economic destruction. Anyway, but that moment was fleeting. 24 hours later, Andrew was announcing another seven-day lockdown just one week after its previous two-week lockdown ended. Likewise, the vast majority of the Queensland population has been in lockdown for a week and will remain so until at least Sunday. I'm going to move this over there so it's more centered. There we go. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see if our lockdown is continued here in Queensland. I would not be surprised if it is. So, as it was in Victoria, if overnight case numbers are not infinitesimally low. And even if restrictions are lifted, citizens will be plunged into lockdown again at the first sign of a new outbreak, just as there have been now in Victoria. We're, we're, there's even talk of us requiring masks for till the end of the year, till Christmas. It's awesome, guys. Awesome. I don't know. I can see how it can be quite frustrating just working in an office environment. You know what's going to happen. More and more people will find ways to work from home. So, and this brings us to the cold hard truth that even the most fervent and fearful lockdown enthusiasts must surely be coming to realize no matter how much you restrict or constrain the population, this virus is not going away. Naturally, this will cause a lot of coughing and spluttering and not of the COVID kind, but it is a simple, unfortunate fact. Even when other states are shutting down and lock, locking out becomes of the far less contagious earlier strains, they weren't actually eliminating it. They were merely hiding from it. With Delta, it is clear that even hiding isn't an option. The New South Wales response has proven all this with both great pride and great disappointment. Our contact tracers were able to suppress all previous outbreaks without resorting to major lockdowns. The Casula... North Beaches, Barala clusters, as well as countless quarantine leaks were all beaten by the best. Other states and cities had to shut their borders or lock down their residents in far lesser circumstances we never did. The Delta strain, however, has beaten us. Even with both widespread and targeted lockdowns and a record number of the world's best contact tracers working around the clock, we can barely keep it at bay. We had every reason to believe we could contain it as we had uh, the others, and we were wrong. You know what we're going to see. You know what we're going to see. We're going to see a rollout of central bank digital currencies. Let, let's put the tinfoil hat on here. A rollout of c- central bank digital currencies used as a contact tracing method. But even that won't be completely efficient. So perhaps Victoria and Queensland will fare better, having gone harder and earlier, or perhaps the Delta variant will eventually overrun them too. Either way... They will be cap- captive to stop-start lockdowns until we get real about beating this thing, not running away from it. Australia's former Deputy Chief Medical Officer, Nick Coatsworth, an infectious disease specialist who is now spearheading the national vaccination campaign, made all of this abundantly clear when he described elimination as a false idol. When did we start talking about elimination? It, this is such a... well. It is such a virulent and evolving virus. How are we going to hope to eliminate it, everyone? But it seems the listen to the experts lockdown warriors weren't listening to the biggest experts of all. So here's the rollout. Indeed, just three weeks ago, Dr. Coatsworth told the Australian Financial Review that Australia needed to learn to live with COVID and that a 50% vaccination rate should be enough to start easing restrictions. You can't say no COVID death is acceptable, he said. Well, yeah, he's right. But people are going to die, everyone. 2021 has to be a a transition year where we get the Australian community used to the idea of COVID in our community through a successful vaccination program. And 2022 needs to be the year we have COVID in Australia. The eliminationist position is made all the more ridiculous by the fact that many lockdown activists refuse to get activated, vaccinated. What? Are you kidding? Well, let's just bring up, let's just bring up this little chart here, showing the differences in civil service and private sector wage growth. But you know, I know this isn't showing. Well, 
how many people are in the civil service, but it's showing you the, how much money they're getting or how much pay rises they're getting to normal people. There's a whole portion of Australians that are not being affected by this at all, by the lockdowns. If anything, they're living a, a cushier life, some of them. Don't have to go to work. A stance only rivaled in idiocracy by the fact that so many anti-lockdown activists refuse to do the same. So what? You've got people people who are advocating for lockdown don't want the vaccinated and people who are anti-lockdown don't want to get vaccinated. Okay, well, we're, <laughs> we're kind of stuffed then, aren't we? <laughs> Maybe I did a poll the other day asking people, what movie are we, we in? And I forgot to mention idiocracy. Maybe that, that's it. We, we should do a, a Amazon play on the Twitch channel, everyone. You know, a, you know watch along because it bloody well feels like that's what it is. So, ironically, the solution is simple for both. If you're scared of getting COVID, get vaccinated. If you're scared of getting locked down again, get vaccinated. Be, uh, but the problem is the rolling waves of lockdown and border closures send the op- opposite message. We are crushing our society, our economy, and our relationships and our children's future all for the sake of a selfish few, indeed a selfish many, who simply won't do the smallest thing possible to make this all go away. Every single adult in Australia has now had weeks or months to get their first dose of the vaccine, something that will give them a 70% chance of protection against serious disease from COVID-19 and an immeasurable protection for their loved ones. So... Anyone who hasn't done so without a literal note from their doctor no longer has any excuse, don't they? People are scared, they're concerned. And there's a lot of fake information out there about it. I mean, from my perspective, I looked at the risk of the vaccine. I looked at the risk of COVID. I'm more worried about the long-term risks of COVID than the long-term risks of the vaccine. So that's why I went and got vaccinated. So, yes, there have been confusing messaging messages from the government, health authorities, and the media, but the message now is abundantly clear. Yes, there have been supply issues, but there are endless doses of the extremely safe AstraZeneca vaccine for anyone who wants it. Yes, there have been language barriers, but community leaders are now coming out in droves to spread the message in whatever language you want. We are fast approaching a point where anyone who refuses whatever vaccine they are eligible for can no longer consider themselves a truly decent member of society. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I can tell you what is causing this. Because they have locked down, and even if they've damaged the economy to an extent and limited the impact of this illness, you've got people there who have seen no impact at all. The only impact they've seen of COVID is the economic destruction and their freedom stripped away from them. They haven't seen anyone sick. They haven't seen anyone dying. If you want, if you want to increase vaccination rates, you need to open up more and let more people suffer the consequences. Which politicians brave enough to do that? And would you want that on your conscience? So, if you care about your country, well, do people care about their country? You know, are you... How many people are front? What? What? So you, a country where you you get no bloody pay rises. You know, wage growth is in the shitter. You know, it's a joke. Everyone where you can't afford a house at all. It's just too expensive. Where GDP growth, you know, has been going great for twenty eight years, but quality of life is going down. How, is that? Is this what the issue is? Not everyone's an ABC journalist or radio host. There are a lot of people out there that are struggling to get by and you're being fed all this bullshit by the media. You know, if if you're a white male, oh boy, they hate you. Oh, you're an evil colonizer. Invasion day this, crappity crap that. You know, oh, oh, men are horrible. How, how much, can you see why people are just going to stuff you? Maybe they can't. Maybe they can't. You know, are people proud of their country? Are you proud of Australia when you hear about neighbours dobbing in neighbours or people going through video footage to report people, people whose businesses are collapsing, who are getting no help? Maybe this is just because some people have been so isolated in the way they work, in, in a government position or a job that hasn't been impacted, they don't appreciate it. 
I know someone, people who've been employees that employees workers their whole life have got no idea the implications of running a business. So if you care about your community and if you care about your family, there's only one thing you need to do to prove it. So do it today. Well, there was a poll here in this one, guys. Let's have a look at the poll. You know, are people who refuse to get vaccinated selfish? 60% of the 2,665 voters said yes, and 40% said no. So we'll have to see if that trend is correct and if it continues. And I'll, you can find the link to the article in the references. Let's have a look at some of the comments on this article, everyone. I'll bring this over here. Let's see what people are saying here. So, Mick A. I was at a small gathering recently, less than 10 as per the restrictions in my state of SA. All those presently only have the AZ available to them. All have started the process. All said they were a little concerned given the reported issues, but the consensus was that it must be done for the good of the country. We aren't all selfish. Well, I mean, there's the thing. An appeal to nationalism nationalism is <laughs> now they you know how many how long have people been attacking nationalism criticizing it and now they're trying to make an appeal to it you know how many idiots will you know kneel or not even pay attention to the australian flag what about the the idiots at the olympics without the australian flag yeah okay everyone's nationalistic and proud can you see why some people aren't really keen you know, get vaccine or keep locking down, your choice. Well, Stephen, absolutely sick of this. We can't keep locking down argument. No one, no serious person in any position of power is arguing for endless lockdowns. When we have a near fully vaccinated population, they're arguing for lockdowns in a population where only 17% of the population is vaccinated. That is the reality of the current situation. It's so obvious that when you have a very high COVID vaccination rate that, of course, we won't lock down because hospitals will be able to manage. The risk of uncontrolled spreads will be minimum. Here's the issue. You need to go really high. You need to get higher, higher than the 80% that they're predicting. They'll have to build new hospital, new ICU facilities for this if they're going to be able to handle the impact that we'll have. Maybe that's cheaper. You know, Paul. Australia has been in and, out, in and out of lockdowns for 18 months now. Until only a few months ago, we were all unvaxxed. After each lockdown was ended, we all enjoyed our freedoms again. Sat beside each other, worked beside each other while COVID was still in our communities to some degree. So we were all happy to be potential super spreaders one day, then turned into hypocrites the next day after being vaxxed and say the unvaxxed should lose their freedoms. There you go. Ian. Joe, what about the people in rural areas who've been trying for months to get the jab but can't because all the vaccine supplies are being held in southern cities or large towns communities? I've gone to my local GP on two occasions now, having first made appointments for the jab and having missed out on both occasions, once because of misinformation from the receptionist and the second because of the unavailability of the vaccine, even though my appointment ha had been confirmed. Am I now to be cl classified as a drain on society? Lewis, to make a comment, anyone who refuses the vaccine they're eligible for can no longer be considered, consider themselves a decent member of society. This statement is very rich coming from Joe, who didn't even tell, is, uh, which, didn't even tell us which one he had and what side effects so far, if any, he had. I'm sure people would be far interested in that. I believe a lot of Australians are vaccinating themselves. I believe a lot of Australians are hesitant as they hear more about the blood clotting deaths and heart conditions. That's the thing, guys. You're being asked to risk your life for the good of the country, essentially, to take a risk. Are you willing to do it? Do you have pride in Australia for that? So, Cass, oh, well, here we go, look at Ash. Easy solution. How about instead of continuing to lock millions of people down, we stop letting in international travellers until vaccinations reach 80%. Phil, interesting take you have there. Yes, I'm currently unvaccinated. Unvaccina is it by choice? No, it is not. I can't even get an appointment to do so in country South Australia. So there we have it. Some of the comments 
from people at least on news.com.au. So what do you think, everyone? Should we be concerned with this rhetoric that's coming from these opinion pieces and journalists that's being put out there in the media? You a fan? Are you going to get vaccinated? Can you if you don't want to? And what's the solution to this? Well, I would suggest that, frankly, it will transition to solutions. <laughs> I would suggest that in this situation, if you want to encourage people to vaccinate, you need to allay their fears and their hesitancy. You don't want to get into a situation where people are forced, where it becomes mandatory. I'm concerned that that's going to be inevitable in Australia. We already have vaccination requirements for certain workplaces in healthcare, aged care, disability care. We limit access to family tax benefit and the ability for children, people to put their children in daycare if they're not vaccinated. It's not much of a step to simply go from that to start restricting other people's freedoms and opportunities. It concerns me where this is heading. I'd encourage you to reach out to your politicians to say that you don't want to live in an Australia that limits these freedoms and restrictions. And if you're not aware of what's also happening in, the, in other parts of our communities, there's hundreds of thousands of people that are forced to vaccinate already for work. And I know people are going to say, but it's different, Florian. You know, this one hasn't, you know, has, has not been approved or it's experimental. Well, no, it hasn't. Uh, it's not experimental. It's been approved. It's passed the safety test. The, the, the same authorities that passed all the other ones have said is appropriate. So if you believe one and not the other, you know, there's the question. I think a lot of people are scared and hesitant because it feels rushed, fast, and everything is a bit unknown. And also, frankly, it's like nearly every horror movie we have seen or every disaster movie. It is, it's the plot to so many movies. So there you go. Take care, everyone. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. And if you're a fan of the channel, there are a few ways you can support us. We'll go to outro mode here too. If you want to, uh, if you want to join us on YouTube or Patreon, sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. Buy a merch from Heiser says. Use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.